Flight and Marketing Animals have their morning breakfast club for loan officers where you can start your day off right. You got to check it out. My friend Frank's there every day. It's 8.30 Pacific time, 5.30 Eastern time. Just fill out the information down below and check it out. On to the show. Now, week over week, refinance activity is down 8.8%. But year over year, it's up 15.6%. And even if we look short of the four-week average refinances, well, they're up 1.4%. This is due less at a slip of interest rates than borrower desperation. You see, according to Business Insider, some homeowners are doing surprisingly bad, even if their homes grow more valuable than ever. According to a Harvard report, they find that the cost burden homeowner, that number rose by 3 million from 2019 to 2022. These are people who just can't pay their bills. So when things get hard, refinance, and it's never been easier to do, at least for some. According to CoreLogic, property owners are sitting on historic levels of home equity. The average homeowner's equity has soared by 28,000 bucks just over this past year. It's grown to an average of about 305,000 bucks per person. Remember when that was the price of a house on average? Now that's the equity that we have, 305,000. But here's the problem. Homeowners are increasingly struggling with a rising cost of home insurance premiums, home repairs, and property taxes, not to mention all the costs and all that debt that they're carrying. And because of this, they can't afford to move. So as a result, we see a stagnant housing market, except for, well, you got it, refinances. Folks are now coming to terms with the fact that they want to stay or they need to stay in their homes and they've got to give up those three percent and settle to consolidate all their debt with a new interest rate in the sevens. Now, I know it's not a pretty solution, but listen, if you're cornered, it's better than nothing, isn't it? Now, how bad has it gotten? It's even affected the president of the United States. I'm not joking here. According to the Daily Mail, Joe and Jill Biden, our president, have been using the Delaware house for fast cash. Did you know that they've refinanced their house over 20 times, totaling 4.2 million bucks since buying that house for $350,000. There's nothing to see here though. There's nothing at all to see here. This is all completely and totally above board, right? You know that comes out to a refinance every 17 months, or as I like to put it, a loan officer's dream client. But I gotta tell you, whoever their loan officer is, that guy ought to be investigated for churning. See, the Bidens have borrowed a total of $6 million on both of the properties that they had, and there's still an outstanding debt of $541,000 on their mortgage, on their current three bedroom four bathroom house their Wilmington mansion of nearly three decades you know after they bought this whole thing the constant refinancing does raise the question of why the Bidens who have reported a net worth of 10 million dollars need a constant flow of extra cash money laundering and the house is worth 4.5 million dollars so how do you borrow six million dollars against a house that's worth 4.5 million dollars must not be using an amc i guess maybe they got a really good appraisal maybe they dusted off a friends of angelo loan back in the old countrywide days i don't know except it's all above board and it does show us a valuable lesson you need to stay in front of your clients because you never know what their needs are going to be you might just have a client out there who you're not staying in touch with now who needs to refinance their house or in the case of the bidens refinance it 20 times did you know that and as you can see from this graph that the cost of framing wood has all but collapsed remember just a couple years ago it was like 12 bucks for a two by four not anymore check this out now this does beg the question if the cost of construction has gone down significantly why haven't home values come down well the reason is really simple if we saturate the market with new homes and values come down all the equity that we talked about north of three hundred thousand dollars per house per average would also come down it'd be a measure of collapsing the stock market just with home prices and if that happens sure more folks would be able to buy homes but current homeowners might find themselves unable to refinance themselves out of financial harm. That, of course, could have a cascading effect on the entire economy as a whole and a measure that would be politically unpopular, especially in an election there, which is precisely the reason our two geriatric candidates right now are avoiding the topic of housing like the plague. Nobody wants to talk about it because there's no good solution, which brings me up to my final, final point and often stated remark, you gotta, gotta look into non-QM loans. The average profile of a non-QM borrower makes nearly Double that of your traditional agency borrower. Did you know that 35% down has become the new norm? Did you know a 20% down payment is no longer enough with these inflated prices for most people to afford their monthly payments? Not when home values are 45% higher than they were pre-pandemic. Can you believe that? And mortgage payments are roughly 
get this, 115% higher. This is why 99% of folks who were surveyed could not buy a house. Yes, 99% of people who want to buy a house can't. This, my dear loan officer friends, is the profile of a non-QM borrower, somebody who's actually got money. I'm just saying, if you want to close deals, it's kind of like fishing. Where do you fish? You fish where the fish are at. I hope this helps.